In the summer of 2006, two groups of tourists took to the now-closed hiking trail up Mount Robson in British Columbia. What resulted was one of the most strangest cases of missing persons in the province's history. As the son of one of the hikers who went up that day, I've naturally wanted to go find out exactly what happened. Long after the investigation closed, I continued to search for answers. This is what I discovered based on eyewitness testimony, police records, and other data. The day started off a little chilly for that time of year, but not chilly enough to be considered dangerous. The tour guides separated the hikers into two groups. Group A, the fast group, and Group B, the leisurely group, which was a diplomatic way of saying that they were slow. My mother, an avid hiker, was put into Group A, and there was supposedly a running gag between the guides that whoever reached the summit last had to wear these embarrassing neon green socks on their next excursion. But to make things fair, they would get to lead the faster group the next time. At least, that's how they explain the very unfashionable socks worn by the leader of Group A that day. Both groups were estimated to reach the summit by noon, with Group A scheduled to arrive an hour ahead of Group B. Each group had two walkie-talkies for safety reasons, and the hike itself was supposed to be fairly safe, taking a scenic route on multiple occasions to avoid potential dangerous spots. There was only one way up, and only one way down. Group A quickly took to the trail while Group B lagged behind. They made it about two-thirds of the way up when my mother slipped on a mossy rock and sprained her ankle. One of the guides got on the walkie-talkie and contacted Group B, who was carrying the first aid kit. At that point, Group B was a little under half an hour behind. Not wanting to ruin their reputation of being the fastest, Group A insisted on going on ahead without my mom. They left her by the trail with one of the guides with their extra walkie-talkie, then resumed their hike. The temperature was getting much more comfortable by that point, so the guide and my mom didn't have to take any special measures to stay warm while they waited for Group B to catch up. For the next half hour, everyone stayed in contact using their respective walkie-talkies, and everything seemed fine. Group B eventually caught up to my mom. As they were tending to her ankle, they called ahead to Group A to check on their progress. At that point in time, they had almost reached the summit. Now, when she was patched up, my mom could have chosen to turn around and go back down the mountain with her guide, but she chose to keep going with the slower group. I guess she really wanted to see the summit. This is where things get weird. At approximately 10.55 a.m., a sudden increase in temperature and atmospheric pressure was reported. Based on meteorological data, there was a spike in approximately 15 degrees Celsius, that dissipated by the time the devices conducted their next check. This is an educated guess, but that means it lasted somewhere between three and five minutes. Now, to be fair, Environment Canada's meteorological services deem this spike to be a glitch, but many people in the surrounding area did in fact report feeling a sudden, but temporary, wave of heat at around the same time. What followed was a low atmospheric rumble that sounded similar to thunder, in that it seemed to reverberate through the sky, but with a softer, less fluctuating tone. There was no storm clouds at the time, and no planes were reported in the area. Despite this, Group B continued their trek up the mountain, with my mom in tow. They reached the summit and found themselves alone. They could see Group A's tracks all the way up the summit, but they ended there. No tracks going down, no signs of going over the edge, no signs of them anywhere. The guides tried contacting Group A on the walkie-talkie, but never received a response. It was assumed that their walkie-talkies had run out of batteries, and since my mother and the guide had been left with their only spare, they hadn't been able to reply. Investigators assumed they'd gotten lost in the woods and never made it to the summit at all and that the tracks were found all from Group B. Whatever the case was, 15 hikers went missing that day and were never found. I often asked my mom to tell me her side of the story, to clue me in on any detail that I may have missed, or things that hadn't been reported. 
but she refuses to talk about it. She'll either change the subject or stare off blankly into space until I shut up, which is really abnormal for my mom. There's only one other thing that's never solicited any kind of response out of her. The feet. In 2007, feet, mostly left feet, started washing up on the shores of British Columbia. No one knows where they came from or who they belong to, but they've periodically been showing up. Severed feet, still wearing their running shoes. Go ahead and look it up if you want to. It's one of those really bizarre, unsolved mysteries you rarely hear about. When my mom hears about them, she goes quiet as a grave. You wouldn't think that these feet would be related to the story in any way. Mount Robson is on the east side of British Columbia, far inland bordering Alberta. You wouldn't think that there'd be any connection, but you also wouldn't think that many people wear high-end hiking boots with bright neon socks, like the one that had washed up on shore last week. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you so much for 200 subscribers. I've made such amazing friends in this community. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today's story was brought to you from Reddit in the no sleep category. I've attached some links into the description below explaining the Canadian feet issue that, uh, you know, appears to be washing up on shore. It's quite weird and it's really interesting to look into if you guys are into that kind of thing. And also, in the comments, let me know if you want me to do anything for my 200 sub celebration. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if you care or if you want anything done, but uh, I know some people have mentioned a live stream or a Q&A. Maybe I'll do something together. I feel like people don't really know me unless they follow me on my Twitter, which you can, as I'm pretty active on there. But uh, yeah, thanks so much, and uh, have a good week. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Bye, guys.